头啊，看，二小姐。Back in the mid to late 90s, if you were a young kid in North America and into Japanese animation, most likely you were in either one of two camps: the Dragon Ball and DBZ camp or the Sailor Moon camp. While Voltron, Robotech, and the like were pretty big in America the decade before, Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon were really the first syndicated Japanese animated shows to truly explode in popularity. In those days, the typical determining factor as to which series you'd become a fan of depended solely on this question: Do you have boy parts or do you have little lady parts? Seriously, that was pretty much it. While most of my friends growing up caught DBZ fever, I never had much of an interest in the comics, TV show, or movies. To be completely honest, I quite liked Sailor Moon in my youth. I'd wake up a little earlier than necessary in the morning before school so I could set up my VCR to tape episodes. That way, when I came back home, I could enjoy the show. I know this all might be very weird or confusing to some people, and you might have some questions about my previous statement. Such as, what's a VCR? And what exactly do you mean when you say you would tape episodes? That's what search engines are for, people. All joking aside, I know it wasn't too common for boys to enjoy Sailor Moon back then, but I was a big fan of the series for a short while. And at that time, I really lamented the fact that so many games based on the series would never see the light of day outside of Japan. Heck, the reason I modded my PlayStation One and started importing games in the first place was because I wanted to play the Sailor Moon fighting game on it, which I wasn't able to purchase because it used to be ridiculously expensive. Well, since becoming a grown-ass man, I've gained the means and opportunity to play some of these Sailor Moon games, and today I want to talk about three of the titles that were released on Nintendo Super Famicom: the original Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon R, and Sailor Moon S. The first game I'll take a look at is Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon, or Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon, as it's often translated to. Published by Bandai and developed by its subsidiary company Angel in 1993, the game is a beat 'em up that very loosely follows the events of the original story arc. You choose your favorite Sailor Scout from the original team and kick, punch, and pummel your way through five total stages, each ending with a boss fight. The gameplay is very simple: one button is used to attack, and one is used to jump. Pressing both at the same time performs a desperation move, which drains a bit of the character's health when used. But the cost for using this move is extremely small, especially when compared to other beat 'em ups. Also, each character can shoot a projectile, which is executed by charging a small meter by holding down the attack button and letting go when it fills up. There are times when this attack is useful, but for the most part, it's just not worth bothering with because charging up the meter makes you immobile. It takes a bit too long to charge up and doesn't really rack up much in the damage department. And of course, you can grab enemies when you get close enough, and have the option to throw them or perform a secondary attack. Sailor Beatdown. As is the standard for this genre, all the characters play differently from each other, and each one has some pretty nice and unique attack animations. Sailor Moon is the standard balanced character with average stats, nothing extraordinary. Sailor Mercury is the speedy character who moves and attacks quickly, but has very limited range and has the weakest attack power in the game. Sailor Mars sets herself apart by only using kick moves, which increases damage and range slightly, and has pretty useful combos. Sailor Jupiter is the power character of the five, whose strong attacks come at the cost of slower speed. And finally, there's Sailor Venus, who attacks at a slow rate but uses a whip that gives her great reach, allowing her to keep enemies at bay from afar. There are some characters who are clearly better than others, however. Bad news for Sailor Mercury fans. Sorry, but the developers of this game must have hated your favorite character, since they made her arguably the worst character in the game. Having high speed is nice, but her lack of power and pitiful range really makes later levels a chore. And playing with Mercury on single player is oftentimes an exercise in frustration. On the opposite end of the spectrum is Sailor Jupiter. Man, that girl is a beast. Her reduced speed is negligible, and the added power makes her a force to be reckoned with throughout the entire game. But what really makes her the most badass of the scouts is her throw combo. 
By pressing and holding up or down on the D-pad in the middle of a combo, you can finish your string of attacks with a standard throw. This can be done with any character, except for Venus, which makes sense I guess because of her long-ranged whip attack. Anyway, Sailor Jupiter's throw is an awesome brain buster pro wrestling move, and by performing this throw combo, she basically keeps every enemy at bay, since the thrown foe will often be hurled into all enemies approaching from behind. Other characters' throws tend to miss or go right over opponents, making Jupiter's throw combo a relentless onslaught of pain. Brain Buster! Brain Buster! Uh! 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 This attack hits so hard, it makes the entire level shake, and even causes these deliciously oversized custard pudding desserts in one of the backgrounds to jiggle like jello. Bill Cosby approves. My favorite character in the series was always Sailor Venus, but I think this game has changed my mind. I'm all about Jupiter now. The five stages are pretty basic, but there are a few things scattered about that make things a little more interesting. There's a train in the second stage that will crash into anything in its way at certain intervals, commandeered by a panda for some reason. Stage 3 takes place in a factory, and it's complete with a moving lift and a network of conveyor belts. And the fourth stage has an area divided into three segments that move, changing direction and speed as you progress. Most of the enemies you face are based on characters that appeared on the show or manga, and are easily disposed of, especially if you're using Jupiter. Uh! Bosses, however, can be pretty tough at times, since they tend to have long periods of invincibility and hit detection seems spotty. I'd say the first stage boss is the most difficult in the game, but still easily taken out without losing a life. At the end of a level, you are ranked on your performance, but it doesn't affect the gameplay in any way. There aren't any cutscenes, except for the ending, but there is a sizable amount of quality voice work in the cartridge, all performed by the cast of the TV show. You can listen to any of the characters' voice samples in the options menu, as well as sound effects and background music. Other options available are changing the difficulty between easy, normal, and hard, as well as adjusting the amount of continues. I own the official guidebook for Sailor Moon, which contains information on some of the extras and secrets in the game. First off, there is a special fan weapon which is quite powerful and seems to appear when certain conditions are met. Unfortunately, it can only be used for the area it's found in, as it disappears when you change locations. There's also an alternate extended ending if you beat the game with Sailor Moon, which is changed even further if completed on hard mode. By pressing and holding L and R when selecting 2 player mode, you gain the ability to play as two of the same character. Holding X at the title screen and selecting the options menu by pressing Y will unlock Nakayoshi mode, which replaces the easy difficulty setting. Enemies are drastically weakened in this mode, and using the desperation attack carries no penalty. Finally, you can enter in some commands during the stage title screen for an alternate image of the Sailor Scout you're using without any footwear, which is bizarre to me, but a major plus for foot fetishists, I guess. Overall, Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon is a simple, fun beat-em-up game that can be completed within an hour. This is the only game featured today that was published outside of Japan, securing a release in France of all places. Even though it's based on a show catered to young girls, it's a surprisingly well-made game that can be enjoyed by just about anyone. However, I'd say that playing this one with a friend is the way to go, since like many titles in the genre, playing solo can be boring at times. The next game is Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon R. Another beat-em-up which came out at the end of 1993, just a few months after the release of the previous game. This time around, Bandai took care of publishing and development duties, but stuck very close to the original gameplay design. Where the first Sailor Moon game followed the events of the first season, Sailor Moon R is based on... Sailor Moon R, the second major story arc of the series. It's a shorter experience overall, with only four stages total, and a somewhat more straightforward level design. With the exception of a raft section, every area has a strict point A to point B setup. The locations are all visually appealing, but from a gameplay perspective, they're pretty bland compared to the first Sailor Moon game, which wasn't all that spectacular in the first place. You're still ranked on performance in between levels, but this time around Tuxedo Mask will also give you some words of encouragement. The graphics, animations, and gameplay are improved over its predecessor, and several major features were added to the game. New to your character's arsenal of attacks is a screen-clearing super attack, which has limited uses as indicated by a ribbon icon. The uses of this move can be increased by picking up a ribbon item, and also resets in between stages. Sadly, this attack is for single-player games only, as it is unusable when playing co-op. 
The projectile is back and is a slightly more viable attack option, as charge times have decreased drastically and it seems to do more damage. The desperation attack has been mapped to the A button, but you can still press the standard attack and jump buttons if you prefer. Also, holding L and R and pressing left or right before using it will allow movement for the duration of the attack. A powerful aerial throw can be performed by jumping and pressing A after grabbing an opponent, and you can also chuck your partner at enemies in co-op mode. The latter can make for some pretty laugh out loud moments. In story mode, the original 5 Sailor Scouts are still the only selectable characters, with new attack animations and tweaked stats. Sailor Moon is still as vanilla as ever, and Sailor Mars plays fairly similarly to a previous incarnation, but also uses her arms to attack now. Sailor Venus loses her whip as her main method of attacking, but she's better for it now that she has some decent combos. And she can still bust out her whip for certain attacks. Mercury still sucks, unfortunately. And I'd say she's even worse in this game than in the last one. On a positive note, she does seem to grab enemies quite often, which can be useful, but there are some cases where that too is a detriment. See for yourself. The OP Sailor Jupiter of the last game has been taken down a few notches, as her Brain Buster throw is gone and her range is shorter. But she's still the best character in the game. To me at least. Like the last game, you can enter a code to play co-op with the same characters, but this time you must hold L, R, and select when you choose 2-player mode. Aside from story mode in the options menu, there's Chibi Usa mode, which lets you play as a sixth character, Sailor Moon's daughter from the future, and is intended for younger or less skilled players. Chibi Usa is very short and cannot grab or throw. However, most enemy attacks go right over her head and miss her completely, making completion of the game a cakewalk. The mode is initially intended as a single player experience, but by holding down L and R when selecting Chibi Usa mode, you unlock two new options. Nakayoshi mode allows two players to play as Chibi Usa, and two player select mode lets one player play as Chibi Usa and the other as his or her Sailor Scout of choice. Sadly, no friend tossing antics of normal co op mode here. The last mode that needs mentioning is Battle Competition, which pits two players against each other in versus matches. It uses the game's engine, but modifies controls a bit to emulate a fighting game. There's not much depth to it, but it's a nice diversion. Perhaps it's this game mode that set the stage for the final Sailor Moon game featured in this video. Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon S, Jougai Danto, Shuyaku Soudatsu Sen. Or as I'd translate it, Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon, Outer Ring Brawl? Fight for the lead. There's really not much I have to say about this one. It's a pretty decent fighting game with pretty basic controls. Weak and strong punches and kicks, Street Fighter style attack commands, nothing too out of the ordinary for fighters of the era. Angel, who worked on the first Super Famicom game, returns to the series and also takes on the role of publisher. There's story mode where Sailor Moon gets challenged by her companions for leadership of the team, in a friendly sort of way. It's called story mode, but like most fighting games, it lacks in the story department. There's a brief intro, some banter between characters before matches, and an ending. That's all. The original Sailor Scouts and Chibi Moon are back, with the addition of Sailor Pluto, Sailor Neptune, and Sailor Uranus. No Sailor Saturn in this game. Oddly, while three new playable characters have been added to Sailor Moon S, Story Mood restricts players to the original five scouts in Chibi Moon and delegates the outer scouts as sub-bosses. They're playable in other modes, but have a very limited moveset compared to the Story Mode characters, which is a shame, since I was particularly looking forward to playing as Sailor Pluto. A pretty neat feature of this game that isn't found in too many other fighting games is ACS, or Ability Customized System. When selecting your character, you have the option to disperse a limited number of points to several different stats, such as HP and attack power. This way, you can alter a character to suit your playstyle and give the game a bit more depth than your run-of-the-mill fighter. If for any reason you don't want to bother with this system, you can always choose to play the game on automatic mode, which distributes points the way the developer is intended. Of course, there are versus modes in the game. One to play against a computer-controlled character, and one to play with a friend, as well as the standard practice mode. Tournament mode allows you to set up a tier of one-round matches between friends, the CPU, or a mixture of both to compete for the top spot. And in the options menu, you can select between four difficulty levels, turn the match time limit on or off, and listen to any of the game's music tracks, sound effects, or voice samples. 
Out of the three games covered in this video, Sailor Moon S is the hardest one for me to recommend. It's decent enough, but there's not much there to appeal to anyone who isn't at least a moderate fan of the anime series it's based on. The original Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon R are both pretty good beat-em-ups, but if you could only pick one, I'd say to go with R. While the game is shorter and the levels are a bit boring compared to its predecessor, the improved gameplay, graphics, and extra modes make it a game that should have a spot in any Super Famicom fan's library. There were a lot of other Sailor Moon games made for the Super Famicom and other systems, and someday I hope to do a second part to this video as I acquire more of them. Maybe there will be all new games in the near future, as Sailor Moon has seen a boost in popularity following its 20th anniversary in 2012, and a new anime is set to debut later this year in 2014. But in the meantime, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Import Gaming for the Win, and as always, thank you for watching. If you need a little bit of yang to counter the enormous amount of yin found in this Sailor Moon video, I'd highly suggest you check out the Dragon Ball game videos of my fellow YouTube buddies Matt Azero, aka Cygnus Destroyer, aka the LGN Defender, and Joe Walker, aka Joe Walker. The Dragon Ball game mashups are really great and are essentially the reason why I decided to put one together of my own. Anyway, this is Jimmy Hoppa of Import Gaming for the win. Take care.